Hello friends, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of The Daily Creative. I'm Chase, I'm here to answer your questions. I got a lot of voicemails from y'all. If you don't know, this is, the, this is the show where I answer your phone calls and try and solve the problems that you're having on your trajectory to becoming an aspiring or maybe a professional creative, maybe professional. Doesn't have to be, but this is the show where I do my best to answer your questions. And we've got some queued up. Um, Casey. Let's hear it. Who's, who's the first caller? Hi, Chase. Uh, my name is David. David. I'm a freshman at the University of Oregon. Okay. And for me, I just feel like I'm just wasting my time with my life. Like, I want to be doing meaningful things now. Same. But I have no clue where to start because I'm not 100% sure exactly what I'm, like, passionate about. So I was wondering if you had any advice. Um, <laughs> I got also, if you're days. looking for a diehard, uh, kick-ass, hardworking summer intern, uh, this summer, I'd love to get in contact. Thank you so much. What's an internship? Uh, did, did we have a number for David? Is it David? Yeah. Do we have a number? Yeah. Most of these, most they, they come with numbers, right? Yeah. Do you want to just call David? I think we should. I think we should. <laughs> the audience thinks we should call David. Do you guys think we should call David? Yeah. All right, all right. Um, actually, uh, just show me the number right there. Okay. This is going to be funny. I hope he picks up. I got to click call. Is this, is this going to work? I think it's going to work. Let's just try it. He waited an answer. Let's go, David. Dialing. The wireless customer you are calling is not available. Please try again later. David, you, you missed out. Stop. Stop. How do I hang up? Stop. David, you missed out. Well, I'm going to answer your question anyway. Um, so David, you're a freshman, right? You don't know what to do. That literally, if you're a freshman at Oregon, Oregon State, University of Oregon, like your job in life right now is to discover what you want to do. And you went to college. See, this is a problem. You went to college just without knowing what you want to do. The reason that you are there, if what you say is true that you don't know what to do, is literally to explore. So what you should be doing is you should be devouring all kinds of stuff that interests you. Do not just listen to your parents. And if your mom is like listening to this, or you could say, hey mom, I was on this show. Mom, earmuffs for a second, because I'm talking to you, uh, David. So ignore your parents, ignore pop culture, ignore Think about what's in here and what do you want to do. Take classes in the stuff that you have. If you have a belief that you might be interested in it, take that class. I don't think you should be on the, the mission critical for your graduation path if you have no idea what you want to do. You should be using your time at school, both in the class experience and outside, to experiment. Because here's, here's what it is. The risks right now, basically zero or super, super low. You don't have overhead. Clearly, you're, you're at school, so you're at school without a decision on a major, so you're there to experiment. You don't have overhead. You don't have bills you know, to speak of. You don't have a wife and kids, or maybe you do. I'm making some assumptions as a freshman in college. You wouldn't have those things. So your goal in life is to experiment right now. You have to take risks. Right now, you could go three years down the terrible, like the wrong rabbit hole, and when you pop up and you realize, shit, that was the wrong decision. You're, you're what? You're 21? I don't even, uh, like, that is a huge opportunity right now. This is the time of life to take risks. So, risk number one is while you're wasting your parents' money at school without knowing what to do, experiment like hell. Uh, are you take? I mean, you have to have some understanding of you. You have to have some self-awareness that you want to do something. And what I hear, I hear a little bit of this in your voice, that you actually know what you want to do, but you think that someone who, that someone's not going to approve, whether it's a parent, a grandparent, a friend. Did you hear a little bit of that in there? There's a little bit like, I just don't know what to do. You do. You, what I think is that you don't know if it's socially acceptable. So this is the time where you, the, if you don't, like the price for not doing what you want to do in life is so much greater than pushing through the, the noise or the challenges it, it, because A, life fulfillment, B, if you do you know, burn three or four years right now and it's the wrong thing, it's fine. 
But God, don't do something you're not put on this earth to do. That Do the best you can. Find something. Experiment. Now, I'm going to give a little bit a, a deeper. There's one, one level deeper. And that is when you learn that thing. Well, first of all, Katerina Fake says it's never too late to go back. And she said this to me in an interview on 30 Days of Genius. Um, and she was maybe, I don't know, mid-40s or something like that. And she's like, there were times in her career where she... she had gone two or three years down, I think, uh, uh, as a textile maker or something like that, never too late to go back. Never, as in never. So if, if you're two weeks from your college degree and you realize that you've got this thing that you want to do, go do that thing. You can always come back and finish college. Two weeks might be a little bit. That, maybe stick it out. But you, you get the point. Um, and then once you do that, I'm going to give this is, again, that next level answer is... Um, what people don't realize is that the thing that you do when you master your craft is you get good at learning a thing. So I would encourage you, let's say you experiment at University of Oregon, you find a thing, you, you like this is, I love this, um, I don't know what it is, maybe it's in, um, you want to write screenplays. You fall in love with writing screenplays and you go, you're in, you know, that's probably the art department or the drama department. Yeah, drama department. So you go in there and you love this. You get so good at it. You, you kick out a few screenplays. Hollywood picks you up. You're on this amazing journey. That's not to say you're always going to be a screenwriter, especially you're like 19. This is like, it's an, an oh, you know what? I just thought of something else too. Um, so I did a, a, a CJ Raw. Had Just search my name and search graduation. Because here we are, I'm recording this, and it's the middle of May, and um, just about time to graduate. But in that, in, that, um, in that video, we talk a lot, or I talked, I guess, a lot about the, the mastery of a craft. What it does is it allows you to learn other things. Because you are able to deconstruct when you, you get a degree in screenplays, or in screenwriting, you, get, you sell a couple of screenplays to Hollywood, you master that craft. What you're able to do after that is deconstruct all of the things that created the success in the area that you're focusing on. And then you can lift and stamp that concept into other areas of life. That is the story of my personal career. Um, I focused very, very heavily on photography. It was the only thing I did for, say, 10 or 15, maybe more years. I mastered that, got to the very tippy top of that industry. And not only did I meet other people, other captains of industry, but I could, able, I could at that point, I could deconstruct the thing that the, the set of things, it's who I knew, how much I focused on my craft, where I, you know, what circles I ran around in, and what was hard and what was easy about that particular thing. And then I could use it to do other things, like, you know, I created the first iPhone app that shared photos of social networks, and we've got Creative Live here. I leveraged all of those learnings into how to create this particular thing right here. So, you know, I, that's a little bit cart before horse because that's not the question that you're asking, which is what do I do now? But if you think about life is long, you need to figure out something that you actually care about. In order to get there, you have to experiment. And when you experiment, go deep. When you figure out you don't like that thing, pull back. Figure out something else, go deep. And I'm, I believe that if you say you started at, at screenwriting and then you said, you know what, it's less about the screenwriting and more about actually making a film, and then when you're in that mode, you're like, oh, you know what, I really love cameras and technology, and I want to be a, a director of photography, and then you figure that out. But you only got to director of photography by starting doing something. So that is your mission for the next year. Um, and again, if your mom says you got to pick a mor uh, mortgage, not a mortgage, don't pick a mortgage. If your mom says you got to pick a major and start today. I'm sorry, you're gonna have you're gonna have to like duke that out with mom or mom and dad or whoever. And maybe you're putting yourself through college. You're at University of Oregon, use this time to experiment, and dear God, I, I don't know why you gave me your phone number. I was, it was going to be so good. It was going to be so good, but I'll, um, just know that I tried to call you, and we'll follow up. Anything else? Yeah, I think that's it. This is an opportunity to take some risks. The, like, the risks, like the, the downside right now is so low. What can you do to take a flyer? That's why I'm a little bit, you know, the University of Oregon, you spend all that money, you don't, you could be experimenting not inside school. Maybe you need it for structure. I'm going to leave that answer right there. Um, Casey, I'm going to, I'm going to,
Is that a, um, yeah, that's, I'll give that a, that's a, I'll give that a cheers. All right, uh, let's go to, on to question two. I know we have another caller. Um, play that beat. Let's go. Hi, Chase. My name is Allison Mayer. I am a Hi, humanitarian Allison. photojournalist and a huge fan of yours. Thank um, you. I work exclusively with nonprofits across the country, or across the world, sharing their stories, like um, organizations that do humanitarian aid, that okay. kind of thing. Great. So my question is, how can I get nonprofits specifically to part with their money? Because it's <laughs> nearly impossible most of the time, especially when there are so many great photographers out there who are willing to do my job for free and I'm not in the business of competing with free. So what special tips might you have for creatives that are working with nonprofits? All uh, right. My social media is all Allison Mayer WSA. Great. And look forward to hearing, look forward to hearing from you. Of course. Allison, thank you for your call in. Uh, I love the nature of your question. I think working with nonprofits is exciting. Um, here's the, the straight talk is it will be very hard for you to make um, you talked about you're not in the business of working for free. The reality is that there are so many people who are willing to do it. So what can you do to be different, not just better than the people who are willing for free? What are you going to bring to the table as, well, she's a photojournalist, right? What are you going to bring to the table as a photojournalist that's different, not just better than the next guy or gal who is willing to work for free? Now, uh, two things. One thing, I think you're facing an uphill battle. Nonprofits, by and large, don't have a lot of money. Um, and just think of they're not in the business of making a profit. So um, that's not to say that you can't make a great living because you can find, um, there are nonprofits for whom you could be the staff photographer. Uh, Charity Water, water.org, I know they have people on staff and or people that they, maybe not on staff, but people that they will send to these places. And if you spend most of your time traveling to Africa, I'm use the, use the um, water, uh, charity water you know, in Africa or Central America or Asia, if you're spending so much time, say 10 months a year on the road with the, the actual um, organization, usually they look after you in all the other aspects. So even though you're not making a ton, you're not spending any money because you're on the road and that's a great adventure. Some people go into the Peace Corps, some people, you might be able to, like, it's, it's not about being rich in money. It's about having a rich life. I'm taking this from Ramit Sethi and, uh, and Tim Ferriss is in the four hour work week. This is a good one too. It's like your, what, what's the income that you need to be able to do the things you wanna do? So if your goal is to serve organizations, tell great stories about people in need, and, and travel the world, you don't need a ton of money for that. Like, right? Am I right? Is this, is this resonating with you? Yeah. It's kind of it's sleepy where it's early here. Wake up, you guys. So the, the reality is that maybe making a ton of money isn't your answer if you want to be on the road, say, 10 months a year. Then you only need, you know, um, whatever, 10 grand, 20 grand to live when you're back in the States. And then you're getting ready, finding your next journey. So don't just figure everything in terms of dollars. Now, I'm going to pretend, I'm going to take you at your word, which is like, I want to work for nonprofits and maybe you don't want to go to Africa or um, Asia or whatever for 10 months a year. I think two things. One, it's going to be an uphill battle. Two, if you decide to fight that battle, it's a pretty interesting opportunity because I think a lot of people hear the advice that I'm giving right now and they're like, peace, I'm out. I'm not, I'm not going to go for it. So I think there is room for differentiation, and if you can be the best, and by the best, I mean the best, but also the differentest, you have a unique angle, you have something that you bring to the table that others don't, you could step into this space and flourish. Every, like so many people think that there's something that's saturated industries, oh my God, it's so full. What it's full of is people who look exactly like one another. So if you can bring something to the table, I don't know what this thing is. This show's not long enough for me to figure that out for you. That's inside of you and your head and your heart. But it is an opportunity for you to step in and do something different and own that thing. Now, before we go, one other tip. There is a, you've heard of double bottom line, triple bottom line companies where social good is actually baked into the DNA of the culture. Um, and without, I'll, I'll, I'll avoid going down the rabbit hole of defining what like 
B corporations and all those things are. But there are companies, and these are there's some massive companies, and they have entire departments, entire departments dedicated to social good. Should I write this down now? Entire departments dedicated to social good, to corporate responsibility. So you might be able to say be a full-time photographer for Intel or Google or some massive company who has said that they want to prioritize social good. They are measuring it by all kinds, you know, these X, Y, Z number of measures and sometimes telling stories for the shareholders or telling stories that help support the mission of the particular social good that they've decided to. If you're Starbucks, maybe it's how to create sustainable coffee and they need to help people not just learn how to plant plants and water them and maximize the yield of some crop in Peru. Peru's Peru coffee? Yeah, there's coffee in Peru. Um, but they probably need to document that and tell other folks in the region how to do that. So sometimes they will actually employ photographers. So that is another angle where you might be able to make your dream come true. Um, that's a handful of different angles. If you can't get through on that, that means you didn't want it bad enough. So that's all I got. Um, Allison, I think it's a great question. We've had questions. I love the variety. We've got you know entrepreneurs. Last week we had Mac here. We were talking about hardcore business stuff. Um, we have photographers, we have nonprofits. That's what this show is about. If you want me to answer your question, uh, as you're, you're a creative, you're, you want to create a living and a life doing what you love, and if there's any way I can help, my breadth of experience, I have the internet at my fingertips, I have friends I can call, I can pick up and just call the expert, or I can steer you to some videos that I've already made. If you want me to think about your question, dial 1-802-962, I gotta look behind you, Four three five seven. I should really know that phone number by now. Once again, 802-962-4357. I will listen to your voicemail. I will respond. I will even try and call you sometimes like I did with David and he, was, he wasn't able to be completed. So without further ado, I hope you have a good day, week, weekend, whatever. And I got another one of these videos coming probably tomorrow. <laughs>